Hello and welcome to this episode in the ClearPass workshop series where we build a ClearPass deployment from scratch and integrate with Wired Wireless Active Directory and much more. In this episode, we are going to revoke certificates that we issued with onboarding and uh, we will see how the online certificate status protocol or OCSP will allow us to uh, reject clients that have revoked certificates. So. Let's go back. So this is our uh, onboarding configuration where we created our workshop CA. And uh, yeah, we have uh, issued a certificate. So from here we can see, um, yeah, we have certificates issued. Also, we can see here, um, we can check the certificates by device. So uh, we can see which device has which certificate. Uh, we can check here by uh, username, so we can see the contractor has two certificates, and we can check by uh, certificate. And yep, this allows us, for example, to uh, revoke certificates um, or uh, do stuff uh, like that. So what you can see here is that we have a contractor with two certificates. So um, one is for a Windows device, the other one is for an Android. In the previous episode, we saw that if this contractor leaves the company, it's probably better just to delete the account and the user will no longer have access. But what if, um, for example, this user loses his Windows uh, device or the Android? Um, what we can do then is revoke the certificate. So let's revoke the certificate for the Android. Um, what we can do here is uh, we just press uh, revoke and we need to confirm that and uh, yeah, it will uh, warn us that you can uh, revoke certificates uh, only once. You can see here on the icon that um, this uh, certificate is uh, revoked. So what we now would expect is if this uh, Android client, so this is the Android client, if I do a COA and terminate the session, it should get back on the network or because the certificate is revoked, um, it shouldn't get on the network. But what we do see, it is allowed on the network. So the rec revocation didn't work and that is expected. Um, it's not what we want, but we will fix that. Um, but it is expected because by default, if we check here um, in the authentication, we use the authentication method EAP TLS. And uh, in, order to, in order to do uh, OCSP validation checking, we need to change the authentication method. So this is uh, the EAP TLS uh, method. And um, as you can see here, um, it does not have OCSP enabled um, there is another one here eptls with ocsp enabled and this one um, yeah has an override so what's probably best is to create a copy and again never change default parameters or default profiles and uh, let's do here eptls aruba lab OCSP and what we are doing here is we don't for now um, overwrite the uh, URL so you can see here this is the best practice and from the OCSP URL uh, if we check here on the certificate you can see um, I'm using the other one so the slash two so if you uh, are overriding the URL you will here change this to um, slash two and then um, it should um, um, it should work. Uh, what we are doing now, and that's because here we um, we did here in the CA we um, inserted the OCSP URL, and that's because we are not only doing onboarded clients but also the AD clients, and it might be that the AD clients have another um, OCSP, and if we are now checking also the, uh, the the AD clients, yeah, then there will be a problem because uh, those are not in the onboarding database. So especially if you have multiple certificate authorities on the same SSID, um, either split it into different services. So here in uh, the, 
So here in the service, what you can do here is you can, uh, for example, check on the username and if it contains an add uh, sign, then uh, do the OCSP against the AD and uh, yeah, make it AD. Otherwise you do it on board so you can split it there. Or you make sure that the OCSP URLs are set correctly. And yeah, we did it at least now for the onboarding uh, certificates. So let's get back to our configuration. So we changed the name to EPTLS Aruba Lab OCSP. And then, uh, yeah, we will uh, do an optional OCSP, which will um, ignore it if there is uh, no OCSP response. And then uh, here we will uh, no longer override the OCSP URL from the client. So still EPTLS, but now we do here OCSP checking. So let's go back into our service. So in the service, this is our Aruba instant service. Here we have the authentication method. So we remove this one. And then we include this one. And yeah, from now it should do um, OCSP authentication. So let's give that a check. And we can see now that uh, this client is uh, rejected. And um, that is because the uh, certificate was uh, revoked. So here we can see certificate status revoked and the good thing is that our windows client if we change the status in here we we'll terminate session what you can see is that the windows device still can access the network so by revocation we rev revoked just the access for um, the lost device which is the android uh, device in our case so um, what you should do in uh, um, in this case is uh, have OCSP configured for the Windows client as well. Otherwise, it could be that the Windows client is no longer uh, able to access the network. So we can um, even try that. So here we go into the status, wireless properties, and we can switch back here to machine authentication, for example. And we connect again to the network. You can see that we now are connected and that's because there is no OCSP configuration in the Windows CA certificates. Um, if you have that filled, um, yeah, you'd better make sure that it is uh, okay. Otherwise it will uh, no longer work. So um, one thing more about the uh, optional setting in the OCSP. So what it will do is uh, if there is a valid response from the OCSP server, it will take that. So if it says uh, it's an unknown certificate or a revoked certificate, uh, then it will uh, deny access to the network. Um, if it says it's uh, there, then it will uh, allow it. If it doesn't get a response, it will uh, just, uh, yeah, it will just pass on if there was no OCSP configured. Um, so. I hope this was useful. We revoked in this episode a client certificate on the Android device and we were no longer able to access the network with that Android device. We were able with the same user on a Windows device which was onboarded as well. So I hope you liked this video. Please put your comments below and uh, subscribe to our channel so you will be notified if there are new videos on this channel.